Okay. So after the installation, okay, whoever needs help, Jimmy will help to do the whole installation. By the end of the installation, you should have a program called PyCharm. If I type here PyCharm, Let's understand first what is PyCharm. PyCharm is application. In fact, it's a simple application that help us to organize all our projects. When you already open PyCharm and the installation, it's already automatically built up for you a real web application, a working web application. How do you know that this is true? One command you will learn, which you will know by heart after a while, it's called Python, manage.py run server. Okay, what does it really do? You know, your, the, the new ones, it really looks like magic and everything looks very confusing. So don't get intimidated. Oh, by the way, I opened the wrong one, apology. Let me close it. I opened the machine learning. Let me just close it and I will open another project. Sorry about it. On your machine, there will be only one. So you won't have this problem. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the same command, Python manage that py run server. By the way, it's all documented in the website. Okay, if I click on this one, I have an application. Whoever did certificate one already know, this is really, you worked a lot on that, so you are very familiar with it, okay? Why is it a web application? You see, I have in the browser, this is really what is known as a domain name. It's not really a domain name like IP address. What is it, 127.0.0.1? This is really the number of your own computer, okay? I have application that I'm using on my own computer. And then after that, semicolon, 8,000, this is known as a port. By the way, a computer, you're accessing a web application, you can access it in many ports. That's called like channels. Don't get uh, discouraged if whatever I'm saying, it sounds like Chinese or it's not clear. When I heard it first time, I totally was lost. But over time you will see it will be clear, okay? For now is every time I type 127.001.8000, that's going to take me to this website. How is that happen? Because I used PyCharm, I ran this command that didn't mean anything to you in the beginning. This command is a Python command. A Python is a language we will study in this course. For now, you just take it like a given. You run this command, this command make it like, this is like a server on Amazon. But instead of on Amazon, it is on your computer. Fair enough. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. This time, this time, I'm going to write here 8001. This has been PyCharm going to make an application. And this time, if I want to access it, 
It's not going to be 8,000. It's going to be 8,001. Okay, let me go back to my browser. If I try to refresh it, I will get an error. You will say, I don't find it. Why it doesn't find it? Because it is on this computer, 127.001, it is this computer. But this time, I opened it on 8001. So if I go and do it, I will see it now. So one thing we have learned, computers don't have a name. Computers has a number. Your own computer, when you use it, his name or his number, it's 127.001. That's one thing we learn. Second thing we learn, I can approach this computer in different routes. We don't call them route, we call them port. So this time I'm saying, if you want to access this web, this web application, you can access it only from 8001. By the way, when I go here, and this is a really good example. If I go here and I type here Academy CD, that all, and I hit enter, I'm getting the website of Academy CD. Hold a second. What is the name of this computer? What is the name of this computer? Here I show you. Let's go, if we, I go to Windows, there is a little command line. It's only for demonstration. You don't really need to know it for now. There's a command called ping. You don't have to know it for now. And if I type academy city.org, you will see I get a number. You see this number? This is the number of the computer that Academy City is on. Okay, let's see if I change this one to this number, what happened? So I put the number now. I didn't put Academy City. I put a number. Is that gonna to go to the same website? It should. Let's try it. You see, it changed immediately to Academy City. Let's do it again. See, it's going to go up, boom, it changes to Academy City. So academycity.org, or the number, it's the same things. So there are three things we have learned so far. One, let's write them down. There are three things we have learned so far. One is every computer, computer has a number. That's the way we know computers. Number two, what we learn, we can approach a computer in different port. Uh, and the third things we have learned, we can we can give a name to computer. So if we really want to take Academy C as an example, the website of Academy City. That all, this is the name.
and the number is this one. Okay, so the number, all the name is the same things. Okay, this is the three things we have learned about internet generally, regardless of this course, okay? Anybody, if I ask you, okay, let's find out Google. When we go into the browser and we type here Google, that call, we get Google website. Can I find the number instead of typing here Google, I want to know what the number of the Google computer. So let's go here again, command line. Oh, no, no, that's what I wanted. Command. And let's do ping. And let's write here Google dot com. What number is Google has? Oh, here we go, I got it. This is the number of Google. See, even Google has a number. Every company, every website has, it's sitting on a computer. So I can really copy this number. One second, it doesn't like me. Let's go here to the browser and put that number. Let's see if we get the Google website. We should get Google's website because it's the same thing. This number, it is really Google. You see, it changed to Google. So if I wanted to summarize and put it here, I can say Google computer, google.com, it is the same as this number. So this is the computer number that Google's website is on. Now, when we use in this course, we're going to use our own computer, okay? On our own computer, we use 127.0.0.1. This is our own computer. So when we go here and we type, 127.0.0.1. It will be our computer. By the way, we will use also a port. I didn't really say it before, but when I go into Academy CD or I go to Google, we use by default port 80. You don't really need to know it, but in the internet, we can have port 80, port 4, 4, 3. We will learn them in more advanced courses, certificate two and certificate three. For now, all what you need to know is that every website has a number or a name, okay? And in this course, we're gonna use 127.001 and 8,000. You can change it if you want. Here, it will not go through because I, when I opened it in PyCharm, I used 1001, but I'm gonna change it back. And instead of that, I will put 8,000 and I will get my web page in 8,000. That's the first things. So we have really a functioning website. I haven't taught you anything yet, but how you get to it. When I click on to do, this will be the first application we study. We already played with it last semester. We learned how to build it up. How does it work? How do we can put, for example, if I put data here, I will write Amos third one, enter. You see, he added up and he wrote it down in the bottom. Amos third one. And we will learn that in fact, he put it into the database and he also pull it up, pull it back. Okay? So if I go back, refresh, go to the main screen and I go back to this application, it is not lost. It is there. Why? Because we put it in a database. So what another concept we learn now? We learn that application, that's number four. 
application can use database. What do we put in the database? It's like a lot of tables and inside every table, we put information. So in this application, we have a table, we'll put it, whatever we type in here, it will put it in a table. What does this table sit in? We will learn in the next session, okay? For now, we just want to know basic concept. So when I type something here, it goes to a table. What does this table exist? We will learn in the next session, okay? And then another thing is, it pulling the data from the table, and you also know how to present it, okay? So here is another concept. So application has, can use database, okay? But application also, has what we call presentation or screens, screens which we usually call professionally presentation. Okay, so how do we, in this web application, this is a page, this is our presentation. We present the data on this page, okay? And then we can say, in other things, that in fact, application can use database application has screens and screens and this is concept number six presentation help to put data in database that's one, and to pull data from data base. What do I mean by that? See, when I typed here, let's say I write here, Amar. I typed in inside the presentation page. Is that right? When I do submit, whatever I typed here, it's going to go into the database. So when I clicked, it goes to the database. And then when I present this page and I want to see it here, it will show me Amara here because it pulled it again from the database. So when I click submit, it's sending it to the database. When I refresh the page, okay, let's uh, let do main and let's do, to, as you see, this is a totally different page. I go to the to do, it pulled the data from the database. You know, maybe the first time it will not be very clear, but over time, you will see it will be clearer and clearer, okay? So this is a very, very important concept. Presentation layer can help to put data in the database and also to pull data from the database to present. Okay, okay. This is really the basic, basic, basic concept of any web application. Every web application has a, a number of computer on which it's sitting. So we saw Academy CD, we saw Google, we saw when we work on our own computer. Then we say every application can have a database, every application we can put data into the database and pull it out from a database. And now, how do we build up an application? How is it designed? 
So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to explain what is Almost what is, she is a web page. You know, you're always using a web page, but as you already know, and Brenda, Jimmy, and uh, and uh, Daniel, they already know what a web page is, but because they have taken this course, let's see what is the simplest web page we can make. Let's make the simplest web page possible. Okay, let's make it. I'm gonna make a a file, a simple file. A text file. Let's save this one first. Hold a second. Let me make sure. Let me save this one. And let me open a new one. So I don't have to close. Almost yes, she one. I'm gonna make a simple web page. And believe it or not, a web page is such a simple concept. But as you extend it, it gets really sophisticated. But let's start from the simplest one. A web page, it is a text file. What does it mean, text? We don't really write anything, it's only text. Here we go, I'm gonna start. We start with HTML. And we end up with same tag. This is called tag, HTML. By the way, this is a website. If I save it, I will save it on my desktop so we can see it. And let's call it our first web page and we give it extension html it's very important when i call it html it is a web page but this web page is so it's totally empty but let's have it and how do we know it is a really a web page i am saving it Just a second. Okay, I saved it. In fact, this is a really totally web, useless web page. Why is it a totally useless web page? Because I didn't put anything. But how do I know that this is a web page? So let me find it. Here it is. I'm gonna put it right here so we can see it. And I'm gonna do double click. Like when we're opening a Word document, we double click on it, it will open a Word. Let's see what is gonna open. Double click, or oh, you open a browser. But it's empty because I didn't put any things. But it is a web page, a very, very empty web page. Let's put something inside it, okay? Let's put something inside it. Let's put something inside it. Let's go open. Go here, and I want to put Amos. File save. And here we go. I refresh. Hey, here we go, Amos came out. Very interesting. Amos came out. So it is a really a web page, okay? But it's not really a, a nice one. It's really kind of an empty one. We would like to make it a little more sophisticated. So by the way, if you really want to start working on more sophisticated, you don't really do it this way. You always, always, always make sure to have two sections. One is the head. Pay attention how I'm working very organized. I have HTML. I have a closing tag. I have a head. I have a closing tag head. And the other one, important one, is body. Over time, we will learn the role of each one of them. 
Certificate two, in fact, we spend a lot of time understanding it deeper. And we do very sophisticated stuff in certificate two. Certificate one, we get the basic stuff. And we learn how do we do it inside Django, okay? And certificate two, we get very sophisticated, okay? We demonstrate it later on, okay? So I'm closing with body. Always make sure you walk nicely. And now inside the body, I can put whatever I want. I'm gonna put my name. But this time I'm gonna use another tag from, that's also HTML. H1 is for header, big header. So I'm gonna put Amos inside. I'm gonna close it, H1. And here we go. I will save it. Let's go back to here. Refresh. Oh, we got a big Amos. Why is it a big Amos? Because we put it inside an H1. If I put it inside H2, which is a smaller one, it would be a header, but a smaller one. Fair enough? So let's see, file, save, and then let's go here and refresh. It's a little smaller. But there is so many of them. And already whoever started certificate two, they already know about a website called W3School, which is excellent one to study HTML. We will dive into it later on in the course. So let me write down here, what is a web page? What is a web page? Web page is first of all, a text file. What language or what protocol we use, we use, use HTML. By the way, HTML is only one part of the whole story. In certificate two, we start and we study JavaScript. JavaScript designed to make the page to be smarter. Okay? It make the page to be smarter. I will just demonstrate it's not for today's session, it's only for demonstration purposes. Something we use in certificate two. Here I have another text file, okay, which has a which has boxes. I think that's what we did last time. If I double click, this is also a web page. Oh, but this web page, this is pretty cool. I can even move, see, I can move the I have a a window and inside the window I have colors that I can play and it can do a lot of really interesting stuff. And if I see, if I click here, allow me to type something and then to add, this is a JavaScript and I have an L. Okay, he made something, he made something here. Something we will learn in certificate two. Okay. The only purpose of today is to tell you a web page. It is a text file. We use HTML. And there is another language called JavaScript, which we use to manipulate the page. So let me just summarize. And don't worry, we will get back to that. Okay, we'll get back to that. And we use, use JavaScript. JavaScript is a language. HTML, it's a protocol. It's like kind of an agreement. If I want to make a header, I can use H1, H2, H3. I want to make an image, I will use a tag for an image, IMG, etc., etc. Okay? So those are the stuff that building up the structure of a web page in a very simple, simple way. Okay? We're not going to study much about JavaScript in this course. That will be certificate two. And other things that I want to emphasize are style in Academy City. We teach what we do. And we do a lot of sophisticated stuff. So in certificate one, you learn a lot how we built Academy City. If you know how to build up Academy City, 
you most likely can build up any website you can think about, okay? We use very, very sophisticated stuff, okay? So that's really a, another comment that I would like to make a, now. I think this is really good for you to know. Please, at home, review what I talked about today. I'm, I'm not done yet, but I just want to emphasize every session, go over it again at least twice, because I'm gonna make a lot of concepts that are new for you, and we build up on top of it. So don't allow yourself to forget stuff. Okay, now I want to, now that I discovered what a web page is, what is, the next one is it, what is a frog, or I mean language. You might have heard, you heard Python, I mentioned Java, script, there's so many of them. There's Java, there's C++, there's C Sharp. First of all, you will ask yourself, which language should I study? Very good question. And honestly, I learned so many of them and I came to a conclusion that you should know at least two very well. And then over time, depends on what you do in life and which projects you work in real life, you decide if to learn another language, okay? In my life, I study C Sharp very deeply, Delphi, Paradox, you name it, okay? But first of all, what is a programming language? Programming language, it's really, a, a, it's comments or a syntax or a way to tell the computer to do something. So this is really a language, a language to tell computer what to do. Okay, so let's take an example. Okay, let's take an example. I'm not going to teach JavaScript now, but I'm going just for demonstration purposes. This is a simple, this is a simple website we started with. Okay, so let's look at it. And we said that we can use JavaScript to manipulate stuff. So how about if we just write a little code it's not required for now, but it's good to know. Let's just add a little script. By the way, if I want to add code, a language, okay, we'll usually, we, we, we write it this way, script. In fact, you can really tell him which kind of script it is. If you don't, he assume that this is a JavaScript, okay? And now I'm gonna write a function here. And we will study the first things after databases. We start with databases in next session. And after databases, we'll study about Python. Today is only introduction session. So we will learn about function. We'll learn about different type of commands. Okay, we'll learn about objects. For now, I'm not gonna teach you what it is, just to demonstrate. So I'm gonna make a function, I will call it click. Click me. And I'm gonna call it function. And I'm not gonna give it any variables. And I'm gonna only write something here. It says alert. And the only things it will say, hello. By the way, just for simplicity, before I will do something with it, if I take this one and just put it in the bottom here, see what's gonna happen. Don't worry if you don't understand it. Really, too much to ask for first session to understand what I'm doing. It will be so clear in a few sessions, okay? I only demonstrate it. I'm saving the file and I'm going back to the browser. 
and I'm going to refresh the page. Pay attention what's going to happen. It says hello. It says hello. The hello came from this function. How does it do it? I'm not going to explain exactly now. But I'm going to do a little things. Instead of having this one to start when I refresh, see if I take this one away, it's not going to happen. Here I defined a function and here I used it. But I'm not going to do it. So now if I save it, I will not see the hello. That refresh, no hello going to happen. I only defined something, but I haven't used it. I can use it and we will learn it, as I said, mostly in certificate too, in fact. I'm gonna put something here inside, here, and I'm gonna call it on click. By the way, I didn't decide to call it on click. It's part of the HTML protocol, okay? I will do equal and I'll put parentheses and I'll put it right here. And now let's see what happened. Go back to here, refresh the page, oh, nothing happened. But if I click on Amos, let's see what happened. Eh? I say hello. One more time. If I click on Amos, I say hello. So again, let's go to our definition. What did I say about a language? What is a language? A language to tell computer what to do. So I wrote a little program, really the smallest you ever will see. I wrote a function and the function is being activated every time I click on the name Amos. It tells him, Please do click me. Okay, what is click me? Click me, it's a function. When the function is operated, it says hello. I can even change what it will say inside. Hello everyone. I am working from inside a function. That's what I want him to say now. I can tell him whatever I want. So let's save it. And let's activate it again. Refresh. Let's click. And it will say whatever I want inside. You see that? So a language tells the computer what to do. Whoever in Certificate 2 already have seen we can use a program even to write a programming language to write a whole page. And that's really more sophisticated, we get there. For now, only what I want you to know, what is a language? A programming language tells the computer what to do. We use the example of JavaScript. So which languages we're going to focus on? JavaScript and Python. Now, some of you might ask, why do I need, why can I use just JavaScript? In fact, people ask that. And in fact, some people only study JavaScript and they're doing very well. But a good programming structure required really those two programs because they are specialized on telling the computer or the different computers and what to do. What do I mean by that? And that's concept number nine. We have three layers in a web app application. What are those three layers and what it has to do with the languages JavaScript and Python? We have a layer number one, we mentioned that before. Layer number one is the presentation layer.
By the way, in this example, we have only a presentation. You see, we're not connect, we're really not connected to the internet. We're using a file sitting on our computer. It's sitting on my desktop. I use JavaScript to manipulate it. So we can say on presentation layer, we usually use, we use we use JavaScript. Okay. Beside presentation layer, we also have what is known B logical layer. Logical layer will use Python. I will come back to that, okay? I will make a little pause. I will get back to that in a minute. Let me just mention layer number three, C. Data layer. For that, we use, I intentionally not even writing the language because I don't want to focus on it too much. I will mention it in a second. I just want to mention what Python is. In the, the simple web page I showed you, we only have JavaScript. We're not connected to the server at all. All what we have is only JavaScript. But let me go back now to the program you're supposed to be installed, having installed on your computer. Okay, let's go and look at this one. Hold a second, let me close. Let me leave this one. Let me go back to this. Okay, here we have a program. I click on the main and I get this page. Okay, when I click here, something happening. Look at that. I click to do, I get a special page. And the page has information I typed before. Who does it? Oh, who does it? Let's look at the pie charm. And I haven't taught you that. I will. I will in the next few sessions. I'm getting a page. We have applications here. We have one says main. If I go to the main, don't worry, you're not supposed to understand how does it work yet. We will go over all of that. I just wanted to demonstrate. Here we have a lot of code. This is Python, okay? This is Python. The Python is the logical layer. What does it mean logical layer? Let me explain. Python, we use Python to submit web pages to update data. A, not exactly, okay? This is not exactly right. I'll put it in parentheses and I will explain in a minute why not, okay? It's half true, it's not even half true, it's maybe 10% true, okay? We submit web page. What do I mean by that? This is correct, we will do that. When we get into this application and I clicked here on main, I get a different web page. Who sent the web page is Python. And next sessions, we will see how does it do it. It's a different page. When I go to Billings, this is another application we will work on. It will have another page. We'll go to customers. It's a different page. See all those pages, who's submitting it? Python. That's a language we will learn how does it do it. Okay, and we'll learn how we build it up in such a nice way we don't get lost. 
because it's very complex. Okay, now, and the last things that I want for today, before I just go overview, it's the last one is, there's one more language. I used to teach like even three courses only on this language regarding the data layer. In the data layer, okay, we keep data. So we use SQL, I haven't mentioned that language as language. Now, by the way, you have seen, I said to update data, but it's already true, it's not Python. But Python is very smart and we will learn a framework called Django, which allow us to use Python and it will automatically will write the language SQL. So we don't have to be expert on SQL because we do a lot of stuff in Python and Python automatically convert it to SQL. What do I mean by that? So if I have a SQL on one side, so let's write it down here, sorry. We have like that, JavaScript on the client side, we call it, on the web page presentation. Here we have Python. And here we have SQL. So if I'm running something on the page, it goes to the Python. Python know what to do with it, depending what I want. If I want just another page, I might just send the page and that's it. Might be that in the page I'm entering data, the data goes to a table. Okay, for example, in here we got to, to do, here I have a presentation page. In this page, I'm typing something here. That's a brine. Or I call it high brine. Okay? See, if I click submit, what really do it does, it's really telling me that I'm really writing something in JavaScript in the in the page using JavaScript to send it to Python. It goes to Python. From Python, it will put it in a database. That's really what we're doing here. How does it do it? We will learn in the next few sessions. For now, we're just demonstrating. So when I click here, it goes to the database, okay? How do I know it did went to the database? Because I can go right to another page, go back to it, and you will see in the bottom, we see high brine. So here it is high brine. How does it work now? I might even ask from JavaScript, I tell him, Python, go and take all the stuff you have in the database, bring it and give me a nice page with everything in the data in the database. And that's really when I click here and go to the to-do application, I, uh, if I go here, if I am here and when I'm clicking, it goes to the Python, Python goes to the database, pull the data and put it down here, okay? This is really the interactions between three layers of a web application, JavaScript, Python, SQL, okay? Those are the three major languages that we use in developing a web applications, okay? This is really what I wanted for today. Any questions, let me just open up. I will stop sharing. And I would like to hear questions, comment. Fezio, how are you doing? Fezio, I lost him. You with us, Fezio? No, I think. Brian, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Can you hear me, Brian? I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, oh, hold a second. I think my speaker is off. That was me. Sorry. Maybe that's why I didn't hear Faisal. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Can I hear you? Brian? I think I might have a problem. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, very good. Okay. 
We finished what I wanted to cover for today. Today it was really just presenting the structure of web application. What are the basic components in that? And we're going to cover all of them. Next session, we will cover databases. And then we'll move up to Python. And then we'll learn a little bit about JavaScript, a little bit. Then we we'll dive into Django, which is the major part of this course. And Django is really written in Python. So we'll be learning a lot of Python. And eventually, you guys will be able to write your own Python application, web application. Certificate two, we will dive into deeper advanced topic in JavaScript, mm -hmm. coordination with Python on the server side. So I hope that's all clear. I just want to make sure for next time that everybody knows how to access the website. So Brian, let's try it. You have, when you log in to Academy City, you can go to the web program. So let's see if you can do that. You can, uh, I will be with my WhatsApp in case I lost contact with you. You can exit the Zoom, go to Academy City, you already have an account. Go to my account, let me demonstrate it. I will show it, how will you do it on yours, okay? Let me just a second, try to log in as a student. And then everybody should know how to do it. I will log to Academy City. And I will log in as a student. I will log off here. I will log off in as a student. You log in under your your account. I logged in. And how do I go to the course that I want to see? My student has a lot of courses, okay, because I'm playing with it. You should see this screen and you should, if you put your picture in your profile, you go and edit your profile, okay, you can put your name, you can put and you can put a picture of yourself. Then it will show the picture. Okay, if I choose a picture, I don't know if I have a picture, but uh, let me see if I have any picture here. I just use this one. I don't know what one, this one, but I'll have some picture. Please do make sure you put your first name and last name at least. And then you can put a college you're studying in or Academy City if you don't find it in the list. Okay, and then just click up. After you're done with that, your name is already recognized. In my account, my account, you go to management. In the management, you see your courses, courses you register to. Here I registered to those two courses. I'm not registered, or in fact, I already completed some of those courses. Let's see if this one is in, no, none of them. Uh, that wasn't a good choice of an account. But anyway, you will see the course they are listed in, when you click on it, it will take you directly to the course you are listed. And then you can see your video automatically works, should work, and you should see yourself. In fact, I have several accounts here, so that's why it won't show me, okay? Let me see if I can close the other ones. I probably have a few of them open. Uh, this one, no. Let me close this one. It will work. Let me just close the rest. Close this one. Close this one. And close this one. Yeah, this one probably blocking it. Now it should work. And you should see your own a uh, picture on the second. It's probably blocked by another account. Let me close all of them. Close everything. Now this should be fine. No, I have the Zoom, yeah. <laughs> you can't really have the Zoom and this one working at the same time. So if I close the Zoom, you will see your image and then everybody that connected, you will be in there, okay? 
So I'm working on this computer and the Zoom is on, you will not be able to have both of them at the same time because one is blocking from the other one. If I close the Zoom, then you will see and you can connect. Let's try it. How about it? What do you say? Why? Yeah, let's try it. How about me and you leave the Zoom, okay? And uh, I will uh, disconnect myself. Let me see if I can leave. Stop video. Let me do stop video. Let's see if that will work. Uh, how about you stop the video? Let's see if the Zoom will allow us even if we just stop in the video. It should. Uh, the audio might be a problem, but let's try it. Okay, you want to close your Zoom? Go ahead. And go and click on your, on your course. You with me? Brian? Yes. Okay. In fact, I will see you in my other computer. Uh, Daniel will see you and I will see you. Go ahead. Here I see Amara. Amara already connected. She got off and she is connected. How about you, Brian? I'm also connected, but not seeing anything yet. Yeah, you can because your Zoom is open. Just I'm get off the session. Wrong. Just, uh, you know, just leave the session of the Zoom altogether. And then just go into the Academy City and join the class. Yeah. In a second, we will see you. Amara, you have two computers? So how did you, ah, you closed the video. So how come I see you? I didn't see, I see you in both of them. Here we go, let's see if, uh, if uh, Brian is there, are you with us? Yeah, I have, Brian is connected, but I don't see your video, Brian. For some reason, I don't see your video. I see you sending me a chat. Okay. Uh, we can't see your video for some reason. Uh, maybe you, how about you refresh your screen or exit the Zoom altogether? Because it should work. Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks when I solve how to do screen sharing within our video, mm -hmm. we don't really have to use the Zoom at all, okay? I will call Brian in a second. Brenda. Can't hear you. Hi, Brenda. Who is going to prepare a summary of today's session? Hold a second, I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Brenda. Very soft. Yeah, now I hear you. Who? Can't hear you. Jimmy, who is gonna make the summary of today's session? Yeah, I can't connect with Boy for some reason. I see that he's trying to connect, but he's not connecting with his video. Okay. Uh, we lost Boy. <laughs> but I see him on the chat. Okay. Amara, you see the chat? Amara, can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent. So I don't know why Brian has a problem, probably with his video or whatever, but it should really work nicely. 
So who else we have in certificate one binder? And have her or him to, to join the class in the academy city? Uh, we have a new student, it's called Aaron. Okay. Yes, he actually attended the session for today. Okay, beautiful. After the session today, we'll make sure everybody registered in the right way. Okay? Okay. Wonderful. And who is going to do the summary for today's session? It will be I and Daniel. Who? Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Okay, Dan Bill. Daniel Dan Bill. You see, it came like a phrase. Okay, Daniel, you make a summary, written summary. I will put what I just wrote here into the WhatsApp. I think this is a nice summary of all the stuff we have done today. Is that right? Yes. I'm going to copy it and you're going to make it as a small summary of everything we covered today. And that's the way we will do every, every session. Every session, somebody will have a homework to write a summary. So I'm gonna save it and we're gonna call it session one. And after you're done, Daniel, you will upload it to Academy City in the right format. So you have some work to do. So I'm gonna put it in the desktop. I'm saving it and I'm going to send, send, send it to you in the WhatsApp so everybody can have it.